Hello everyone, welcome back for another lesson. In this lesson we will take a look at the nomenclature for acids and bases, so how to name those two groups. So we will not pay attention to salts just because when we did the nomenclature for covalent and ionic compounds, we talked about salts when we covered the ionic compounds. Okay, so if you need to uh, review those rules, go back to the previous um, video that was talking about nomenclature and you will get the rules for salts over there under um, the ionic category. So let's begin. Acids. So there are two types of acids. Acids that are binary, so composed of an H with something else, another element, and acids that contain a polyatomic ion. So we'll start with the basic ones. Um, we know that acids normally start with an H and then they're followed by a nonmetal. It could happen, if you recall, that you will have a bunch of atoms and it will end with um, COOH. Okay, so you've got the two, uh, the two types of acids. So let's stick to the basic ones for now. Um, so uh, H something. So H is called hydro. So the structure of the name will be hydro for the H. And then the nonmetal will have the ending in IC. So we'll we will change the ending for IC and put the word acid. What does that mean? So if we take a look at the first example, we have H2S. So we replace the H's, and don't forget, this is ionic, we do not use prefixes. So we replace the H by hydro, and then S, which is sulfur, rather than putting sulfur, we'll change the ending and we'll put IC, so sulfuric, and then put the word acid, right? So hydro, sulfur becomes sulfuric, acid. So if we look at the next one, HCl, H would be hydro. Cl is chlorine, so chlorine would become chloric. And then we put the word acid. And you'll notice that the hydrochloric or hydrosulfuric is in one word. Here we have HBr, so again the H will be replaced by hydro. Br is bromine, so this will become bromic acid. Okay, so simple enough. Now, when there is a polyatomic ion, it's slightly more complex, obviously. So there is no hydro prefix. We don't pay attention to the hydrogen. And that's how we know when we look at a name where there's no uh, part, uh, no hydro part, we know automatically that there is a polyatomic ion in that acid. So there's no hydro. We don't pay attention to it. And then depending on the polyatomic ion, how it ends, if it ends in ITE, like nitrite, well, we'll change the ending for OUS. And if the ending of the polyatomic ion is in ATE, so nitrate as an example, we'll change for the ending in IC and put the word acid. Okay, so if we look at a few examples, so we have HNO2. So again, we don't pay attention to the H. We don't put hydro in front. We just basically name the polyatomic ion. So the polyatomic ion here is called nitrite. So we said anything that would end in ite changes to O-U-S, us. So nitrite becomes nitrous, 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 we will say nitrous acid. Here we have nitrate. Again, we don't pay attention to the H. We don't put hydro. So nitrate, eight becomes ick. So this becomes nitric acid. Okay, so because there's no H or hydro in front, we know that it's an acid with uh, that contains a polyatomic ion as opposed to just a simple acid, a binary one. Here we have H2SO3. Sulfite becomes sulfurous, okay? Um, acid. Sulfate, SO4, becomes sulfuric because whatever ends in eight now ends in ick for an acid. And the last one, CO3 is carbonate, it's the carbonate ion. So anything in eight changes to ick, so it becomes carbonic acid. Okay, so if I make a comparison with 
H2S. H2S is called hydrosulfuric acid. Okay, we put hydro because of this here and because this is a binary or a simple, if you like, um, acid. If we make the parallel with just sulfuric acid as opposed to hydrosulfuric acid, well, by the name, we know right away that if we talk about sulfuric acid, it's because we're dealing with the polyatomic ion, sulfate, SO4. If we had put hydrosulfuric acid, we would know that it's the simple version, which is just H2S. Okay, so that's why we don't put the hydro in front here to remind ourselves that these are more complex molecules that contain a polyatomic ion. Okay, so those are your two sets of rules for acids. This is really the most complex part. If we move on to bases, you'll see it's slightly uh, simpler. So bases, we know that they start with a metal and the formula ends with OH, which is hydroxide. So we have the name of the metal followed by the word hydroxide. It's as simple as that. So NaOH would be Na is sodium and OH is hydroxide. KOH, K is potassium and OH would be hydroxide. So if I wrote it, we'd say potassium hydroxide. All right, MgOH2. Again, these are all ionic, so we don't use prefixes. So the metal is magnesium, and OH is again hydroxide. And because we don't use prefixes, we don't need to pay attention to this over here. NH4OH, that was your exception, if you recall, in the other... Um, video. So this is still a base because it splits into two ions. So as long as it's ionic, something that ends with OH will be a base. If it doesn't split, if it doesn't dissociate, then it is not a base. So in this case, it's a base because it's ionic. NH4 is ammonium. And we have OH, which is hydroxide. Okay, so it's, a, it's slightly simpler for bases. That's it for the nomenclature for acids and bases. Like I said, covalent and ionic bonds, we did uh, ionic uh, when it comes to salts. We talked about it in the previous video. So all you were missing was the nomenclature for acids and bases. So that's it for today. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. And otherwise, I'll see you around for your next lesson. Until then, take care.